in the Bible, in Daniel chapter 2. The prophet Daniel cried out in worship and in praise to the Lord, and he said, Let the name of God be blessed forever and ever, for wisdom and power belong to him. He gives wisdom to wise men. He gives knowledge to men of understanding. It is he who reveals the profound, the, the hidden things. He knows what is in the darkness, and the light dwells in him. His understanding is infinite, the psalmist adds in Psalm 147, verse 5. God is not wise because he has wisdom. He is not wise because he has understanding. He is wise because he is wisdom itself. Wisdom originates from him. And though we may not always see it, no, we, we may not always understand it. All of the results of all of the things that occur on this earth are in alignment with the perfection of his wisdom, that he might receive the glory that is due his name. That's perhaps, perhaps a different, difficult concept to understand. Because certainly in the, in the circumstances of life, and in our own circumstances, we just don't see it, do we? We just don't get it sometimes. But despite the tears, and despite the suffering and, and the hardship, despite the heartache and the pain, we who know Christ believe that our God does what is right, and what is good, and what is wise. And that in him, there is a wisdom that is beyond our comprehension. So, what do we do? We need to let go of our own wisdom. We need to abandon it. And we need to rely on the infinite wisdom of our God. And when we, we do not rely on him when we refuse to do that, well, then we hinder the development of our relationship with him. Why? Because we fail to take him at his word. As he promised in Isaiah 42, 16, where he said, I will lead the blind by a way that they do not know. In paths that they do not know, I will guide them. I will make darkness into light and I will make rough places into smooth places. These things I will do, and I will not leave them undone. Do you believe that? Those of us who know Jesus Christ believe it and trust in his word. We trust in him. We trust in his wisdom. But it is certainly our natural tendency not to rely on the wisdom of God, isn't it? In the circumstances, in the difficult circumstances in our lives. We perhaps would uh, prefer to direct our own steps according to our own wisdom, according to our own ideas, according to the wisdom and the ideas of other people. But the fact is this, true wisdom cannot be found in any of us. True wisdom comes from God alone. And in addition to that, Paul tells us, true wisdom must be revealed to us by God. We're incapable of uncovering it on our own. We can't discover it by our own abilities. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6, through 16. That is the fact that Paul brings to the attention of the people in the church in the city of Corinth. 
human wisdom was keeping them from divine wisdom. And through their own resources, through their own uh, experiences, through their own efforts, they would never be able to comprehend the things of God. So, this passage of Scripture is perhaps a call to us to embrace the wisdom of God as he reveals that wisdom to us through his word. For that is true wisdom. Not the wisdom of men, Paul says in verse 6, yet he says we do speak wisdom. We speak of a wisdom, uh, the wisdom of the cross. We speak of the wisdom of Christ. And though the world doesn't recognize it as wisdom, and they think that it is uh, foolishness, Paul says we still speak among those who are mature. Teleos in Greek. Those who have been made complete in Christ. Those who have welcomed the wisdom of the cross into their hearts. Those who belong to him. Those who are his. It's not a level of maturity. But Paul is saying we are the mature because we are the redeemed. We speak among those who have trusted in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Isn't that amazing? We're, we're the mature ones. We're the wise ones, not the people of this world. We have a wisdom, Paul says, that is not of this age, I own in Greek, a wisdom that is not of the time period in which we live. We're not in line, we're not in sync with the thinking of the people who are all around us, as we well know. And this wisdom has always been hidden from those who don't know the Lord. Hidden from the rulers, Paul says, archon in Greek. Hidden from the leaders. Hidden from the authorities in our society. Hidden from our government officials. Hidden from our business leaders. Hidden from the religious experts of this age. Who are passing away, Paul says. Cartageo, they are coming to an end. It's all coming to an end. The wisdom of this world is almost gone. It, it's drawing to its conclusion. But Paul adds in verse 7, we speak of a different kind of wisdom. We speak of the eternal wisdom of God. A wisdom which he says was a, a mystery. Mysterion in Greek. Something that has been hidden. Something that has been hidden throughout time. But now it has been revealed by God to us. Hidden wisdom which God predestined. Proorizo in Greek, which in his mind was predetermined. A plan. He had a plan that was already mapped out before the ages, before time even began. A plan, Paul says, to our glory. A plan for us. For the glory of our enlightenment. For the glory of our well-being. For the, for the glory of our salvation. For the glory of our eternal blessing. God came up with this plan so that we could be with him forever. Wisdom, which none of the rulers of this age, both Jews and Gentiles, understood, Paul remarks in verse 8. For if they had understood it, well, then they wouldn't have crucified the Lord of glory, would they? And that's proof that they didn't have any real wisdom, the result speaks for itself, doesn't it? 
the result of their unbelief, the result of their lack of wisdom, the result, the outcome of rejecting the truth, because the result was they executed the Son of God. Just as it is written in several places in the Old Testament, Paul points out in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, and in part in Isaiah 65, 17, and Isaiah 52, 15, where we are told that the things which our eye, our natural eye, has not seen, the things which are our ear, our natural ear, has not heard. There are things that haven't even entered the heart of man, Paul says. Cardia, into the heart, into the, into the mind, into our spirit. These are things that we are unable to discern either externally or internally, no matter how diligently we seek to understand them. Specifically, all the blessings of God that are found in Christ Jesus. And these things are still a mystery to the world, aren't they? But, Paul says, these are the things that God has prepared for those of us who love him. But, once again, we are unable to discover these things on our own. These are things that have been given to us, yes, but we need God to reveal these things to us. For to us, God has revealed the truth, Paul says, apocalypto in Greek. He has unveiled it. He's unveiled the mystery. And how has he unveiled it? Verse 10 says, through the Holy Spirit. He is the one who reveals these things to us through the scriptures, through the word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit, we are told in Ephesians 6, 17. In the Bible, we have the very words of God, very words of God, spoken to us. For the Spirit searches all things, Er unao in Greek. He reveals the things of God through the Word of God right down to the core, right down to every detail, to every word, to every letter in the Scriptures, even the depths of God. He says, bathos in Greek, the hidden things that are too deep for us to understand. He reveals these things to us. Now, well, Paul says, let me give you an example. Verse 11, he says, For who among men knows the thoughts of a man? Well, except for the spirit of a man, which is within him. Fact is, nobody on earth really knows us, even our closest friends, quite like we know ourselves. Do you agree with that? Well, Paul says, even so, in the same way. The thoughts of God, no one knows, except for the Spirit of God, who, who is God. And amazingly, he reveals these things to us. So now, we have not received the spirit of this world system, no, no, the spirit of men. But Paul says we have received the Holy Spirit who has been sent from heaven and who now lives within those who belong to Christ. So that we might know, so that we might recognize the things that have been freely given to us by God. Through the Spirit, God offers the truth to us. Things which we now speak, Paul says, not in words that have been taught to us by, by human wisdom, 
by human understanding. No, we speak in words that have been taught to us by the Spirit through the Word of God. Combining, he says, sunkrino in Greek, comparing spiritual thoughts, spiritual ideas with spiritual words. It is the Spirit who brings these things together for us. He brings them to our understanding. He makes it all clear to us. But the natural man, the man or the woman without Christ, who does not have the Spirit of God living within him or her, well, all of those people are not capable of understanding these things. Why? Well, we're told why in John chapter 3, where it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit of God, well, that is Spirit. So that person who does not have the Spirit of God within them does not accept, he cannot accept, Dekomai. He, he's unable to receive the things of the Spirit of God as truth. He can't receive those things on his own. But instead, these spiritual things are foolishness to him. Moria in Greek. They, they're nonsense to him. He, he can't understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Anakrino in Greek. They are spiritually examined. A process of sifting through the word the way that a judge would sift through the evidence at a trial. But we who are spiritual, we who belong to Christ, we who are being guided and led by the Spirit of God, well, that person, Paul says, appraises all things. The Spirit helps us to sift through these things, to come up with the right answers, to make the right decisions about things. He is our point of reference in life. And notice it says in that verse, in all things. He guides us in all things. Yet, we are not appraised by anyone, by no man. No one can examine us and judge us in the spiritual matters. Why? Because they have no knowledge of spiritual things. For without the Spirit, who can know the mind of the Lord, Paul asks. Well, who can instruct the Lord? No one, though I know a lot of people try. But through the Spirit, we have the mind of Christ. Now we're able to see things from his perspective. He instructs us. As the psalmist prayed in Psalm 119, verse 8, where he said, Open my eyes. Illuminate my understanding that I may behold wonderful things from thy word. So we embrace the wisdom of God as the Spirit reveals that wisdom to us through his word. So, like Daniel, we say, let the name of Christ Jesus our Lord be glorified and magnified, and lifted up forever and ever for wisdom and power belong to him. Amen. You've been listening to Bruce David Bell, pastor of Berean Bible Fellowship. If the Lord has ministered to you through this message and you would like more information, then visit us on the web at bbfva.org.
www.ghostbusinessfoundation.org.